As Christian Eriksen lay down on the field fighting for his life, with his teammates forming a protective cover around him to keep the hawkish glares of the camera away from him, everything became clear. Football is just a game, and it's not a matter of life and death. Here was a 29-year-old player at the peak of his powers, lying down helpless. Thankfully though, the Inter Milan playmaker was revived by the medical staff following some really quick action from Simon Kier. The entire Danish team was shell-shocked, and so were their opponents Finland. The game restarted 90 or so minutes later when it could have been moved to another date. The Finns won that game, but there wasn't much to celebrate about to be fair. How can you celebrate a victory when your opponent's best player suffered a cardiac arrest? The Danish players didn't play badly after the restart, but it's understandable that they were distracted and that their thoughts must have continued to go back to Ericsson. What's up everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of Goalside, where we bring you all things football from a unique perspective. Today, we're going to have a small discussion about Denmark and how well they've done under such testing circumstances. Is this Denmark side going to make the national team's class of 1992 proud? Make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications so you don't have to miss out on any of the good stuff anymore. Strength from Tragedy Coming back to footballing matters, the defeat in the opener meant that Denmark might not have been able to make it out even as one of the third best placed sides of the tournament. With games coming up against the likes of tournament favourites Belgium and Russia, a scenario of an early departure seemed to be more likely. But then again, this isn't the first time Denmark had to bounce back and show the world that they're not just an afterthought when it comes to European football. They might be a small country, but they definitely seem to have strong willpower and sheer determination, which is why you're unlikely to see Denmark get walloped by the best sides on the planet. While most expected Kasper Hulman's side to fold in the aftermath of Eriksson's cardiac arrest, the Danish Dynamites used tragedy as a source of strength and have been playing for one another since then. And after taking Wales to the cleaners in their round of 16 tie, who can say that this team can't repeat history? A manager who wasn't supposed to be Another telling storyline for this tournament has been that of their current manager. Kuhlmann wasn't even supposed to be leading Denmark to the Euros. Had the pandemic not caused worldwide devastation, he would have been watching the Euros from the stands, taking notes and preparing to take charge from Orga Harajde. The former Norsjeland man has now presided over the most tumultuous two weeks in Danish football history. In fact, he's become more than just the country's manager, he's their current leader. The 49-year-old has done an amazing job at steering his players through this emotional roller coaster with tremendous dignity, and the players see it as well. Following a 4-1 win over Russia, which guaranteed his side a place in the round of 16, Kasper Schmeichel singled out the manager for praise. Life wasn't easy for the manager either. His play career came to an abrupt halt when he was 26 after going through nine knee operations. He started dabbling in coaching with not much success, so it was a surprise when he was given the job in 2019 to take over a year later. While his predecessor was a pragmatic tactician, Hulmand is a staunch supporter of the Cruyffian philosophy. Since they've always been a resilient side, you might never have seen Denmark play an attacking brand of football. However, their current manager has changed all that, with the national side playing some eye-catching football. In the first three World Cup qualification games, they scored 14 goals and conceded just once. The manager understands the quality of players that he has at his disposal, so the Danes playing the sort of football that they're not known for shouldn't come as a surprise. And it's due to this togetherness and willing to try something different that Denmark have become a formidable force at the Euros. Taming the Welsh Dragons it took Denmark all but 27 minutes to break a Welsh side that was expected to offer them stern resistance. On paper, it appeared that it was a clash between two similar sides in terms of European stature. However, once Kasper Dahlberg scored the opening goal, it became clear that those comparisons were nothing but statements to make the Welsh look good. While Wales did have a good start and attacked from the wider areas, Denmark's compact defensive structure made sure that Wales never really got a foothold on the game. Unlike Turkey, who put up a feeble fight in all three group games, Denmark made sure that they weren't there just for the heck of it. Wales were the unexpected semi-finalists of the previous Euros, but this time around, they were no longer the neutrals' favourites. Denmark now hold that title, and they've won the hearts of millions of fans around the world. We all want to see the Danes do well. 
shipping four goals past a decent Welsh side is no mean feat, but when you allow your players to play to their strengths, results can be favourable. Denmark's management knows the team's strengths and clearly wants to play on them. 1992 vibes? Following the disappointment of Euro 88 and the controversy during an Olympic qualifying campaign, the Danes were falling apart. Rikard Müller-Nielsen was tasked with guiding the team to the 1992 Euros qualification. It was a time when legendary duo Brian and Michael Laudrup had quit the national side due to the manager's pragmatic approach. The Danes did well during the qualifiers, but were unable to pip Yugoslavia to a place at the tournament in Sweden. But everything changed when the UN sanctioned Yugoslavia for their crimes against humanity. UEFA promptly banned them from taking part in the tournament and with 10 days left, Denmark were invited to take their place. Most of the national team players were getting ready to enjoy a much needed break from the game and they were hastily called upon. With almost no preparation, observers expected Denmark to arrive in Sweden just to make up the numbers. Even the country's fans didn't expect them to do anything amazing. They might not have had the best players at the tournament, but the Danes had great spirit and they weren't carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders. In the group stages, they held England to a goalless draw, which was followed by a narrow loss to Sweden. A win against France was needed to secure progression. France was stunted by mounting expectation and lost the game to a side that wasn't even supposed to be in the tournament. Wins over the Dutch and then the big final against the Germans, which Denmark won thanks to a Jensen Vilfort goal. In fact, he actually had to leave the national side multiple times in order to visit his daughter, who was fighting a losing battle against leukemia. It was his daughter who had urged her father to go and play the final before she passed away a few weeks later. Personal tragedy and glory, therefore, isn't an entirely new concept to the Danes. They surpassed all expectations in 1992, and to this day, that triumph remains Denmark's greatest sporting achievement. Indomitable winning mentality This willingness to go far when no one expects them to makes Denmark a real treat to watch. This is a team that is playing without any fear. Nobody wants to face a side like that. In the quarterfinals, they're taking on the Czech Republic, who are on a journey of their own following a surprise 2-0 win over the Netherlands. The Czechs also play an entertaining brand of football, and this matchup is going to be fun to watch. If they manage to beat the Czech Republic, they'll take on either England or Ukraine in the semi-finals. Do we expect Denmark to go all the way? Well, it would make for a great storyline, and it would make us so happy to watch another underdog story unfold. But it won't be easy. They'll have to beat Czech Republic first. But if they manage to secure a place in the semi-final, who can bet against a side that has taught us a really valuable lesson in drawing strength from turbulence? <laughs>